Hello and welcome to Ben Rosser's Conservatorium of Audio. I'm Ben Rosser and today we're going to be taking a look at using grooves in Ableton Live 8. Grooves can be quite a handy thing for adding that extra little bit of interest or movement to a particular sound. And even in genres where you typically have a fairly tight beat, say for example trance or drum and bass, by adding a groove or a little bit of swing to elements that are sitting further in the back of the mix, you can help add that extra little bit of interest. It doesn't always work, but it can be quite a handy trick. So what we're going to do today is we're going to fire up a few different loops. We're going to see what we can do with them when we apply grooves to them. And we're also going to see how to extract a groove from an audio or MIDI clip that can then be reused on other clips. So even if the main component of your beat has a fair bit of swing and you're having trouble getting everything else to match up, there is ways of making that happen. So we'll find ourselves a bit of a loop to work with. We might find a bit of a drum loop to start off with. We might go with this one as it's got a nice simple beat for us to work with. And we'll just, might just grab the first four bars of that clip. So if we just have a listen to that one, might just throw a little bit of compression on that just so that we can hear it that little bit better. that's a little bit better. So what we're now going to do is just open up our groove window by clicking the little button with the two wavy lines on it as we can see there and we'll also just widen that up a bit so that we can see what we're doing there. You'll find there is already quite a fair few grooves available in the live library so if we go into our groove section of the library you'll notice there's a few different folders of stuff in there from hip-hop to percussion to quantization as you can see so you might find a simple swing preset and we'll chuck that one on our beat and we'll see what that one sounds like so it's just a matter as you saw just grabbing hold of the groove and dragging it onto the clip and the groove then comes up in our groove pool there is another way you can do that if we just delete that groove is we can drag it straight into the groove pool and then drag that from there onto our clip. And this means that you can apply the same groove onto many different clips just by dragging it out of the groove pool and onto whichever clips you want it to affect. You'll notice there's a few different settings in our groove pool. We've got our main one which is our global amount which allows us to affect how much groove is being applied by all of our different grooves in our pool at the, the same time. So it's basically like a master control for our groove amount. We've also then got a few different other controls for each of our grooves from our bass control, which allows us to adjust the bass timing that it's using, 1 16th in this case. We can also adjust quantization so basically if we turn this one all the way up, what this will mean is it will automatically quantize the audio or MIDI in the clip before it applies the groove to it. So even if the clip's already got a bit of a groove, if you want to apply a new one to it, turn the quantize up to 100% and you'll get a nice result out of that one. Our next control allows us to adjust how much of the groove affects the timing of the audio or MIDI clips that it's applied to. We can adjust some randomness to the timing which can help humanize it a little bit especially if you're dealing with a bit of a drum beat that you've made with MIDI and you want it to sound a little bit more human. And you've also got a velocity control which allows you to determine how much of the velocity in the groove will affect the velocity of the, the audio or MIDI that it's being applied to. So there's a fair bit of control that you've got there. So what we're just going to do for the moment is we're going to turn our 
global amount down to zero so that we can hear this clip without the groove and then we'll turn it back up to 100% so that you can hear it with the groove. So if we just hit play on that now. You can actually hear that that groove is still being applied to the clip. You can hear some of the, the notes now sounding slightly out of time. If we turn that timing value all the way up, and bring our global amount up, So that one's not sounding too great at the moment, but we'll find a bit of a different one and see what that can do to it for us. Considering we're dealing with a bit of a rock beat, we might go for a bit of a rock sort of groove. So again, we're just going to apply that one to our clip. We'll hit play. You can hear with this one that the velocity is being used quite a lot and as a result we're losing some of the notes so we might just make that a little bit more subtle for example if we turn that one all the way down bring our velocity to zero you can hear the original sound if we bring the timing up and bring the velocity up. If we bring the random amount up, you'll be able to hear what sort of effect that has on the sound. Kind of makes it sound like our drummers had a few too many beers, but can be useful in some situations. So we'll grab ourselves a bit of a different loop and we'll see what we can get happening with that one. Might stick with something a bit percussive maybe this one could give us a bit of an interesting sound to play with so we'll just delete that groove for the moment we'll get this clip playing bit of an interesting percussive sort of sound